Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix Online Meeting 182, blowing our way through 2020. Uh, welcome to the 16th of January. As always, uh, we're here recording this video talking about the Wix tool set. Uh, we have, I guess, a little bit of triage to do, not much. And then I want to talk about the thing that we've been, um, I know Jacob is very excited to have discussed, um, and we've been mentioning in the work items as probably the largest thing left, uh, that it would be Wix 4 patching changes coming along. And then we'll do the usual questions and comments things at the end. So uh, as always, these meetings are recorded. For those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, uh, Bob, you ready for triage? Sure, why not? Why not? Let's go do it. Not a lot to talk about today. Um, this first one has been sitting here for a while. Um, I, I've said a number of times that we'll kick a discussion off in email and such. I think maybe I'll just make it one of the Wix 4 topics one of these uh, weeks, and then we will um, we'll go from there. But let's talk about this other issue that came up. And... I think someone is just asking how to use this uh, extra attribute that was added so that we would maintain backwards compatibility with V3 and not break anybody that was depending on the old behavior with the non-UI language specific comparisons to now use language specific comparisons. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically what it boils down to by default in Wix 3, Burn uses the old school uh, localization support back to Windows XP. Um, oh, right, right, right. It's even that. Yeah, yeah, that was it's what you did back then. Right. <clears throat> and of course, starting in Vista, things got dramatically more complicated and better. Um, but at that point, yeah, we already had the behavior baked in. So uh, Blair made this change, and I asked him to make sure that it you know, was opt-in, uh, which, yeah, it's still the right thing to do, but it means it lacks a certain amount of discoverability. It's in the documentation, but if you overlook that, then you might be surprised by the, by the behavior. Right. But... Now you'll have this one more thing to point at the new documentation. Sure. And I explained it, Blair explained it, and the user has not come back, so. All right, but this is what he wants. This is what we're expecting. So let's go mark this as anything else being support and carry on, right? Or solve. I don't know which way to solve, resolve it. Not, not a bug, I think. Not a bug. Already solved? Momentarily. Yeah. All right. And I think that's everything. We'll come back and talk to you about the extension to version their IDs um, on another day, maybe next week or maybe next show or maybe the one after that. I don't know what we'll do. It'd be so good. what about, can we do 6108? 6108 uh, issues. Issues. 6108. I think that works, right? Support closed. Oh, it's marked closed. Um, ah, yeah, you wanted to talk about, you're trying to get this, uh, I saw this, uh, the SWIFT written, written. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with this bug since I just tied it to that one, but maybe I should have created my own or I don't, I don't know. know. The question is, why is it closed? He closed oh. it because he didn't provide any real information. Uh, we should create a new one then. <laughs> or, yeah, I, mm, that or you have to take over and provide all this for him and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, so I would, um, yeah, I'd probably create a new one. Yeah? Okay. Sure. All right. Cool. Um, so uh, is that the question, or do you want to talk about actually this whip? Uh. We can talk about it if you want. I wasn't sure whether you just wanted to do email or not. Um, I think it's cool to bring out the ability to do .NET Core. People are going to want to be able to do this more and more, especially now that .NET Core has the ability to do UI, which 
back before uh, very recently it did not. Um, I think it's interesting that it takes 60 megs. It's going to add 60 megs to your bundle just to get started. Um, well, I mean, that's just because I was requiring you to provide the runtime. So, but, like but this way, Sean, is, is SCD here? Is that self contained deployment? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I couldn't, I, I thought that was it, but I wasn't entirely sure. Probably should call that out somewhere. Yeah, I just provided a link to the deployment options for .NET Core. Yeah, and well, we probably should somewhere put, at least in the title, you know, self-contained deployment and then parentheses SCD. Then it'd probably be fine or else. Well, actually, I'm curious about this. Do you see this as like being a big fork in the road between uh, self-contained deployment and something that requires the the runtime? Um, I'm not sure. I, I didn't go too far into figuring out how you would, like, how the host is going to find out which runtime is supposed to be the one to use. Because, you know, in the full framework, in the config file, you could specify which framework you wanted. And then we relied on the .NET full framework APIs to use that config file, look at what's installed on the, on the machine, and it'll figure out which one to use. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I didn't go far into figuring out how that works in .NET Core. So I don't know if they have some kind of fallback mechanism where if it's not installed on the machine, then they'll try to look in the folder and see if something's there, or whether we'll have to do that logic of, mm. I don't know. No. My understanding, and it could be wrong, but you have to build your app, and either you expect to be, you build yourself to be self-contained, or you build yourself to be dependent on the framework. Like there are different ways of um, building your your project. So Sorry, on the uh, on the framework. Yeah. On the framework or on a runtime host. You For when you build, you specify the whether you want to be self-contained or whether you want to um be you be framework dependent or what it well that's, I, i'm asking because framework usually means dot net framework so what what's the other if it's not self-contained what's the other is it not framework dependent i forgot what the other one's called Redis dependent maybe, maybe that is i don't know i i just yeah, they've normally been pretty careful about only calling yeah. something framework if it's you know the full i haven't looked closer i've done a lot of my stuff self-contained that i've done with dot net core but that's just given the scenarios. I think there is a place here to be framework dependent because presumably if you have a uh, .NET Core app a BA, then you may have a .NET Core app. And so installing the .NET Core runtime has value for both of those. And then you're not packing all of the extra um, bits both times, both in your BA and then also with your app. Oh, yeah, for sure, especially if it's 60 megs. Yes. So I think there's something here to – I think there is value in, ha in supporting the the non-SCD style publishing, the other one, whatever that one is called. It is called framework-dependent deployment. Yay, my memory is not hosed. Um, my respect for the .NET Core team has gone down, however. Yes, yeah, so, so the, the framework deployment – the framework dependent deployment basically means you have to install. I think supporting that as well has value too. Sure. But I'm, I'm also fine with the self-contained deployment because it means you won't run into the stupid, ugly prereq BA that has to pop up to install the framework. Correct. I, I, I think both is great. 60 meg seems like a lot, but maybe event, maybe they'll slowly rotate that down or... Maybe native linking will make it smaller, although I can imagine using WPF probably needs a lot of support. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a lot of PM book. Um, of course, if you included the .NET framework redis in your bundle, you were already above 60 megs anyway. So The .NET framework or the .NET core? Framework. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking about before this. 
Yeah, in but the times. but a lot of times that was already built in the operating system if you could use the one that was there, so you didn't have to necessarily pay it if you're downloading well, from the internet. So. Right, but I'm saying if you had a self-contained bundle, a compressed bundle with the framework, then you were already paying a pretty high price byte-wise to carry the framework, even if it wasn't needed. Yeah, I guess I, if you weren't downloading from the internet, yes. So, um, Sean, this is cool. Um, if you want to keep hacking on it to get to a place to um, make it a uh, handle framework, that would be great. Um, also, you mentioned in here something about the um, app config files and things like that. Um, I think we should just change this around to be whatever makes the most sense um, for uh, the for this code. Um, the using the app config and everything, I wasn't ever really sure why. It felt like we were doing that because that's the way you're supposed to do it, not because um, uh, not because that was what was best or easiest even. So using Bootstrap application data or even putting it in the manifest, in the BA manifest, now probably the Bootstrap application data um, would be fine by me if that makes life easier. Yeah, I mean, I think we used the config file before because that's where you needed to put in which .NET you required. Oh, right. You had to feed that to the .NET framework for it to all get hooked up. So we were we needed that app config anyway, yeah. so that's probably why we put it in there as well. Yeah, right. Right, right. All right, cool. So minor things, I would at least say one self-contained uh, deployment style. And maybe if you if you're interested in trying to extend this to being framework dependent, then maybe just take SCD style out completely, and have two user scenarios: one for STD and one for framework dependent, uh, one for self-contained, one for framework, and then lay out all of the challenges that go with all of that work. Yeah, I'm not sure when I would do that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> like I've already I've already done this part. That's kind of as far as I was going to go for a while. Yep, seems reasonable. Uh, then I would just tweak this up here, and then we'll make sure it gets up on the web correctly. Um, and if you want to keep using this issue, uh, this is the pull request. This issue, then I think we need to clean this up at least a little bit. Or you can open a new one, whichever way you want to do it. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yep. I'll let you make that call. Yeah, I'm fine if we stick with just the self-contained deployment, though until we have a framework dependent one, maybe the name should change in case we do need two different BAs. I don't know how likely that is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Although we could also uh, nah, nah. mumble mumble. We could also add one if it becomes necessary for a framework dependent deployment and call it, you know, I don't know, fdd.net core bootstrapper application host. <laughs> or you might as well, the name's already long enough. Spell out everything. It is long. <laughs> it is long. .NET as the beginning of a name is not great, given that dot is not usually a valid um, <laughs> identifier in the beginning of the world. So That's why I like it spelled out as D-O-T. D-O-T, N-E-T? Yeah, I don't know. It never looks as good, but yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right, cool. Um, continuing on, let's talk about other Wix 4 stuff. That was a surprising Wix 4 stuff. All right. So what's going on in patching in Wix 4? So in I put on here a real quick sketch of what the steps that you go through to create a patch in V3. Um, you compile a patch WXS file that has the patch metadata that describes what you want in your patch. 
um, you call light on it to create this thing called a Wix MSP, which is not the patch. It's just the information that will be used to create the patch. You then use Torch to create a transform between your baseline, your baseline and then your updated um, MSIs, in this case Wix PDBs, uh, to get a transform file. A Wix MST is a uh, XML version of that that's just faster for us to operate on. So then you take that original patch information, you take that diff, and you use Pyro to compile that Wix MSP and the diff, and you get an output of an MSP. And in the middle of all of this, you have to have this identifier that matches this Wix MST to something that you put in your patch uh, WXS. So there's a lot of uh, mixing and matching between what's in your XML and the command line arguments um, across these four different tools. Uh, so looking at making that not as complicated than before, now that we have a fresh look at the whole thing, um, I have working in the change right now where in the patch baseline element, which is the place where you put this ID today, uh, for those of you that are familiar with patching, the, page, the patch baseline element now, you reference the two MSIs or Wix PDBs uh, that you want to transform. So you have your baseline and you're updated inside your patch information. So then once you do uh, that, then you do a build, just like you would build anything else. You build your patch WXS, which is your, your source code for your patch, and you say you want the output as the MSP. And behind the scenes, it does essentially all the work that those other things did, but it does it without writing them to disk necessarily and uh, without all of the extra steps along the way to give you the same output. Uh, so it's a lot simpler. It's a lot of things I like about this. One, it's a lot simpler. Two, it also, we should be able to put it um, patching into the MS build targets. That's been missing for a long time because calling candle light and then torch and pyro was not something that the targets handled really well. Now, given that it's just a source code input and an output, building patches through MS build should be uh, straightforward, very straightforward. Um, and it's also a lot easier, well, just in general to build patch. You say, I want this, point at the two files you want patched, and boom, you get an uh, MMSP. I am probably about 20% mm, complete on the work after mm, three or four days of work so far in it, but a lot of that was getting myself acclimated to patching again, which has been a long time. Things are going well. I have a dream that they are going to... Uh, Everything's going to continue to go very smoothly, and I'll be done quickly. Um, you never know how reality will go. Plus, we have work coming down the pipe that will probably distract me from being able to work on this 100% um, right now. But patching is coming together. My dream of making it simpler and integrating it into the Wix v4 uh, build pipeline that we have developed, uh, that is the one of the larger developments in Wix v4, uh, has looks like it's coming to fruition cleanly, and I find that all very, very exciting. Uh, um, Sean, Bob, anything you want to add, ask? Jacob, I know Jacob's been excited about getting patching just solved so we can move forward on all the things to make burn handle it and unlock all the burn unit tests if we can try to bring a lot of those back. But anything else that I'm forgetting here? Uh, I don't think you mentioned it explicitly, um, but uh, you can have multiple patch baseline elements, which means the you you retain the ability to have a patch with with multiple transforms. Correct. That's correct. So it even it's a greater simplification than you show here because in V3, if you had multiple multiple transforms, you had your candlelight, torch, 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 yes. then pyro. Pyro with those three MSTs, and you had to line up the you'd have three of these dash T lines with these IDs matching whatever you entered in here across. Right. So essentially by bringing this all into this um, element, it's all your metadata, all of your description is in the patch information. And then, yeah, you can have as many baselines as you want. Yeah, that's right. Um, otherwise, it's not a lot different. So it's a lot different, but not a lot different. It's in the end, almost all the same code just being placed into the Wix pipeline the Wix v4 pipeline model and getting a lot cleaner. So, 
Um, I have also kept the ability, so just currently, just FYI, as I've been going along, the, page, the patch baseline, the patch baseline element also has a uh, transform file attribute on it, so you could refer to a explicit MST um, and use that as your transform, as opposed to having you know pass your baseline and your updated um, MSIs or SPDBs and having it generate that. You could provide an explicit transform and say, no, this is the transform I chose to use for these things. So you can essentially get the same behavior with candlelight, pyro. Um, and, you know, with Torch, calling Torch a few times. And that. Now, we haven't decided on if we're going to re-implement Torch in V4 or how you'd create those transforms. So you may have to use something like MSI Tran. If we don't provide a transform tool in Wix, uh, we, that'll be a discussion for a later day because, honestly, with V4, you don't need Torch as much anymore. So, um, but we'll talk about that more uh, at a later date when we talk about, you know, what are we going to do about language transforms and things like that, where you could use something like Torch again? Um, but yeah, so, so you're not with, losing any scenarios. With, with patch baseline, you can literally just pass in a Wix PDB or an MSI, and yes. the, right, the right magic happens, the MSI gets unbound and all yep. that? Yes. So we can get rid of that feature of melt? Um that feature of melt. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't know that I brought all the functionality of melt in with all the admin image manipulation that it does. Okay, okay. Um, but that's not to say that it shouldn't do all of that. That It, it may be another step beyond getting the, the essential patch work going that then has to add the, um, uh, the whatever magic melt does behind the scenes to line up files and things like that again. Yeah, um, okay. But if it's just an admin image, then a lot of that's in there. Well, so so when you pass in an MSI, does it actually create an admin image? Um, or I is... don't remember. It's whatever the unbind code does, and I haven't done a lot to the unbind code um, because it seemed like it was working well for decompiling, so I didn't dig into yeah. it a whole lot. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't have a, a deadline. This is... Uh, kind of on top of everything else that I have going on, but I wanted to get into patching to get a handle on it since it was one of the larger unknowns. And now that it's becoming more known, uh, just for uh, remembrance, there is patching, there was um, instance transforms, which will be very easy after this because this will bring all of the transform work in, into the pipeline that instance transforms will immediately be able to reuse. So instance transforms should be very simple, uh, look to be very simple. Um, after this, and then merging of merge modules is the last thing to bring in, um, to bring the code back. And then Wix should be generally equivalent to what was the, the raw scenarios would be the same as V3. There may be depth features that we're missing and uh, more, um, and plenty of bugs for us to go solve. But uh, V3, V4, I think uh, V4 will be uh, pretty far along and certainly enough for other people to give it a try and let us know what bugs are left. On that note, other things people want to talk about? Questions, comments, other things going on around out there? Sean snuck up on us with the .NET Core thing, which is pretty cool. That's very cool. That was not a small amount of work either. Yeah, it took a little time, but a lot of that was just learning .NET Core, figuring out how to get it to publish and writing the tests. I'm, I'm, yeah. Before uh, will be great when we're, and it feels like very close now that patching is coming together. So um, it was kind of hanging over my head. All the other stuff is, this is the last unknown. So now having it known, I'm very excited. I just really would like to just sit down and finish it all if I could. So, all right. Well, I guess on that note, uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Maybe we'll talk about how to number the elements or the Wix extensions and how to version them, which is the open discussion that we need to close on so we can go out and execute on that. Um, and we'll do triage again, should we have any issues uh, to talk about then. And I guess until uh, January 30th, looks like we'll have, wow, three meetings in one month. That's kind of cool. Uh, January 30th, we'll be back two weeks. 
and we'll do all this again. So until then, you guys have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.